In today's lesson, I'm going to be looking at urban geography. Now, this is a unit that appears in the human environment section of the exam paper, which is section two. First of all, all questions are core questions. And what that means is you have to answer them. You're likely to encounter at least two questions in the SQA exam paper. And those questions are more than likely going to be worth between four and six marks. And therefore, the number of points that you revise for the different areas of urban geography should at least have a minimum of four and probably up to six points revised. Questions are like to be both a mixture of described questions as well as explain questions. And what's important to consider is that you are prepared to answer Ordnance Survey map questions that go with the urban geography topic. And you'll find another chalk talk that focuses on map skills. Because more often than not, there will be a map that is linked to some knowledge and map reading skills that relate to urban geography. In this first pair of learning outcomes, you're being asked to identify the main characteristics of urban zones. Now there are four urban zones you'll have studied in geography, and these are the CBD, also known as the Central Business District, the inner city, the suburbs, and the rural urban fringe. What's important is that you can describe their main characteristics, and what that means is, how do they look? How do they appear? What are you likely to find in any one of these four zones? Now you will have studied these in the context of a Scottish city or possibly a city elsewhere. What's important though is that you could identify them using a photograph, you could identify them on a diagram, and most importantly, because it's one of the most common questions you're likely to find in the exam, that you can identify them on an Ordnance Survey map using map evidence. The second outcome is your ability to explain why they are located where they are. Now in this next group, of learning outcomes, you will see a familiar pattern to the types of questions you are most likely to encounter that require knowledge and explanation. In this first grouping, you have to be able to explain the changes or the problems that are likely to be found in the central business district. You must also be able to describe and explain how those problems are being managed or solved. In this second learning outcome, you have to do a very similar thing, but this time for an inner city area. And that's also like the CBD going to have to be for a city that you've studied. For example, you need to describe and explain the changes and problems that are found in that inner city area, as well as describing and explaining how those problems are managed or solved. In this final outcome that relates to an urban zone studied, we're focusing on the rural urban fringe and the issues associated with this land use zone. The first outcome is where you have to be able to describe and explain the changes that are occurring in this particular area of the city. The second learning outcome is linked to the problems associated with the change, especially linked to the idea of urban sprawl, which is the uncontrolled outward growth of cities. In the final learning outcome, it's focused on the different solutions and ways that this sprawl and spreading of the city can be managed. This particular learning outcome is often found as a map question where you need to consider an area of a map on the edge of the city and why it suits development or the problems that might be created if it was developed. And that would, of course, require you to use map evidence. This theme is explored in another of the chalk talks focused on map skills. In this final pair of outcomes, the theme in urban geography switches to a developing world city and you will have studied a particular city somewhere in the world, possibly a city like Mumbai in India or Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. In the first learning outcome, you must describe and explain a range of problems that people experience in different housing areas in these cities. And these problems, more often than not, relate to life in a shanty town. In the second learning outcome, you can see that you're being asked to describe and explain in detail a range of solutions that people are using to deal with the problems that they experience whilst living in these shanty towns. And you're more than likely to have studied some actual examples that people are using in these cities. Now let's have a look at some actual exam questions and how you would answer them. In this first past paper exam question, you can see that we are being asked to focus on the CBD 
and changes that have occurred in recent years. This question must be answered in the context of a developed world city and you must name the city in which you are answering. The question suggests for Glasgow, but it does go on to say, or any other developed world city, and therefore you're free to talk about any city which you have studied. You must explain each point that you make, as the command word is explain, and it is a five mark question, and therefore you must make sure you have five points explained. Let's have a look at the likely points you are going to make. If your answer was based around Glasgow, you might by start talking about the building of an indoor shopping mall, the Buchanan Galleries. Now this was built because the Glasgow City Council wanted to attract shoppers back into the city centre, especially because many were now starting to shop in supermarkets and out of town shopping centres. The Buchanan Galleries provides an indoor all weather shopping experience and therefore more people are likely to wish to use it, bringing them back into the city centre. Now in this point, you would explain and name the Buchanan Galleries. That shows that you've clearly studied a particular city and you're also wanting to explain why they needed to build it. So what is the reason? Let's have a little look at another point you might make. You might mention that the city has introduced a one-way traffic system in the CBD. Why? Because you would want to say that there was increased levels of traffic congestion in the city before this was introduced. And the introduction of a one-way traffic system encourages traffic to flow much freer, therefore reducing congestion. Another solution you could mention is the pedestrianisation of Buchanan Street. You might want to say that they have done this because shoppers are wanting to shop in a nice, safe, pollution-free environment and therefore encourage people into the city centre. A number of old buildings have been renovated. They're even suggested in these two photographs. You could mention, for example, that the Italian centre was renovated cleaned up and high-end shops were attracted into this area of the city. Why did they introduce this? Because they wanted to attract shoppers who were willing to spend quite a lot of money in the city. A final point you might want to make, because it is a five mark question, is you could talk about the renovation of Central Station and Queen Street Station more recently. Why have they done this? Because they're wanting to attract people to use public transport to get into the city centre rather than relying on their cars. And if public transport's more attractive because the stations are much nicer, people are more likely to use them. Now that is five points. Each point has been explained and every point actually references an actual example from the city you have studied. It is worthwhile preparing maybe a sixth point, for example, the introduction of Buchanan Gallery's car park, multi-story car park, to introduce the amount of, increase the amount of parking spaces available and reduce on-street parking, which is a creator of traffic in the city. And why six points? Because there's no guarantee this question is not going to be worth six points. Okay, this past paper question looks very similar to the previous one, with one exception, and this is because the focus is on the inner city. The question itself is almost the same. You must give a range of reasons for changes that have taken place in the inner city and your answer must focus on a developed world city that you have studied. Therefore, your answer must start by naming a particular city. Otherwise, you'll find you cannot get full marks. The question in this time is worth six marks and therefore you must make sure you make six points. The question also gives you some key ideas to think about which you might choose to use in your answer or not, that's entirely up to you. Now let's have a little look about how you might approach answering this. And we'll do this through Glasgow again. You might by start identifying that the BBC relocated to new offices on the River Clyde in an area that's now called Media City. Why did they relocate to this area of Glasgow? Because this was an area with high unemployment and by relocating to this area, they were gonna provide high skilled jobs to the people living in this area, therefore increasing the amount of employment. They also have redeveloped a lot of the derelict sites on the River Clyde into new housing areas, medium density housing to attract young people and families back into this area of the city by offers, offering high-end housing right on the River Clyde, therefore improving the quality of housing in this area. Other developments include the building of the hydro and a number of other key hotel 
and restaurant developments in the area around the SEC. Why did they do this? Because not only does this provide a lot of jobs for the people living in this inner city area, but it also increases the amount of entertainment available and attracts people in who come to spend money, not just during the day, but in the evening as well. Another development has seen the introduction of bus lanes across the south area of the inner city area of Glasgow, through areas like Govan and the Gorbals. These bus lanes lead directly into the city centre and provide a quick route for people living in this area into the city centre, which makes this area more attractive for people to live in. They also relocated the transport museum to an old derelict dock area on the River Clyde. The reason for this was, first of all, it helped redevelop a rundown derelict area, but it also became a focus for tourism and provided jobs in this particular area of the city. Now, what you'll see through my answer is that I've not just identified a range of things that were built and developed, but I've also linked them to actual places in the city. This is a six mark question, so you might also need to mention one more point because I've only mentioned five. So you could, for example, mention what the Glaswegians termed the Squinty Bridge, which is a bridge built at an angle across the River Clyde to increase access into the CBD, encouraging people to want to live in this inner city area because they have a quick link to the city centre now. In this final past paper exam question, the focus has switched from a developed world city to a developing world city. And therefore your answer must refer directly to a city in the developing world that you've studied. Now this may very well be Rio de Janeiro in Brazil or Mumbai in India or any other developing world city. This question asks you to describe in detail measures taken to improve conditions and therefore you're going to be asked to identify six different measures that in some way help improve the life of people living in a shantytown in the developing world. It is a six mark question, so you must make sure you make six points. Let's have a little look at a possible answer you might write. The first solution you might talk about are self-help schemes. Now these are schemes where the local authority or a charity provides some basic raw materials as well as some training to the local residents in how to build their own sturdier home. And this is to improve often the very temporary nature of housing in shantytowns. So for example, in a shantytown like this, the roofing might be made out of basic corrugated iron and the walls might be made out of temporary wood. Now this isn't very secure in a hurricane or a storm or maybe a very wet period of time or even an earthquake. Whereas providing people with their own building materials and telling them how to build proper structures allows them to provide a more secure home. Another solution could be building water pipes into the shanty town or putting in a water pump. This provides a clean water source to the residents and therefore reduces the amount of waterborne diseases. A linked solution, but separate, is the building of enclosed sewers. And this ensures that human waste is removed from the streets and that flies can't access it. And obviously flies are one of the things that vectors that um, spread disease in shantytowns. But if all sewers are hidden in pipes beneath the shantytown, that's going to reduce the incidence of disease in these areas. Another solution could be to increase the level of policing in shantytowns to help reduce the level of crime that is often a factor in these very, very poor areas. That's certainly something that the Brazilian government has been doing in a number of its cities. Another solution, one seen in India, are these high density residential developments, high rises basically, that they built next to shanty towns with the aim of relocating the residents of the shanty town into these much nicer uh, set of housing than you would find in the existing shanty town with proper amenities, electricity and running water. A final solution, which is starting to be adopted in a number of countries, is actually giving land ownership to the residents of the shanty town. The problem residents often have is they don't actually legally own the land in which they live and therefore they live under constant threat of being asked to leave. By giving them the land, they're more likely to want to invest in the land, build proper buildings and stay there for a longer period of time. 
That concludes today's lesson on urban geography. What's very important is you identify both the developing and the developed world city that you studied and the particular case studies, always answering your questions with named evidence in your answer, because that is a good way of securing additional marks when writing an exam answer.